Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, A Practical Approach for Data Analytics and Visualization. My name is Wanda Barrero. I'm the Client Success Manager here at PDS and joining me today is Russell Hendrickson, the CEO of PDS. Good morning or good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're unfamiliar with PDS, for over 20 years we've been working in the healthcare space around analytics, dashboarding, visualization, business intelligence, and a big part of today's webinar, data warehousing. So organizations need a plan. And as everyone here in the audience knows, there are so many different types of data in healthcare. Um, there's financial data, operational, clinical, just to name a few of these. So let's talk about how you as an organization can make sense of it all. So I can tell you from a business user side, what the business users want is they want all their data, something like what you see on the screen here, and this is a representative visualization where I'm just clicking down on the side of the screen where I have patient access data, I might have physician productivity data, where I'm relating RVUs and patient satisfaction with coding and scheduling or appointments. We might want to look at performance opportunity where we're looking at, you know, what are the potential gains within data or, you know, looking across at things like denials or even clinical quality data and shared savings programs or even modeling compensation data. So what the business users all want is just point and click, drag and drop. The challenge, though, is going back to how do we make sense of all of that data and how do we structure it and give it to the users in a way that they can start to answer the questions. What you're going to see on the screen here is a typical sort of flow diagram for a data warehouse where we have our application data, where we might be pulling practice charges and facility charges and all kinds of expense and financial information and then a lot of those other data sets, whether it's patient satisfaction or budget data, whatever, into a centralized data warehouse. And replicating that data and then modeling that data, ultimately what we have to get to is some kind of structured data for reporting. And to really understand a couple different approaches, we need to roll back a little bit and go back to the first methodology for data warehousing was really popularized by Bill Inman. And this kind of top-down approach was focusing on normalization of data, bringing all the different data together into a schema that allowed it to be extracted from the source systems, transformed, and loaded. And along the way, then, your data warehouse design was really about bringing all that data together so we could relate it. I like to think of this as almost building what I call a data repository. So it houses all the data and we're looking to join it, but it's less maybe business user focused. The other approach that's really popular with modeling data warehouse is through Ralph Kimball. And Ralph Kimball has this bottom-up data mart approach. And his idea is that data mart are dimensionally related capabilities specific to business users and are used in different areas. And so a data mart might be used in, say, finance or might be used by operations. And the goal of Kimball's Data Mart was as you bring up each Data Mart, the business users can very quickly get value from the Data Mart. And then over time, as you continue to bring up additional Data Marts, you start to integrate and join those Data Marts, which becomes your data warehouse. So it's a very much a phased or segmented approach to joining data rather than sort of the top-down centralized approach that Bill Inman talks about. And we talked about organizations having two approaches to choose from, the design it all out up front versus designing it step by step, which is more of a phased approach. Both approaches work, but in some cases we've worked with healthcare organizations pursuing both strategies at the same time. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. You bring up a good point here. It's very typical organizations may be pursuing both strategies, either one that they're really trying to map out and design something more at an enterprise level. At the same time, they often have to work more in a focused data mart approach or a departmental approach to bring those pieces together. So it's not uncommon. One of the other things that we see organizations doing more and more with consolidation is if they've used this kind of phase data mart approach is stepping back and looking at more of a plan design approach. Overall, though, what I would say is working with PDS, you know, our practical data solutions that's right in our name, is trying to take a very practical approach to bringing up departmental data marts in a way that the business users can not only validate the data, but start getting ROI very quickly. So a key part of our methodology is getting results for the users incrementally. So we've talked a lot about data modeling, but we haven't mentioned how the analytics and business intelligence software tools play into the strategy. 
Right. So the reality is that if the data warehouse is structured appropriately and can deliver value to the users, to a very large degree, the business intelligence or the analytics tools are almost like a commodity. I mean, there are nuances. Certain tools are, have strengths and weaknesses depending upon the type of function the users want to use. But if your data warehouse is designed appropriately, you can plug one or multiple tools into that model data and deliver value and even change tools as newer tools become more popular. Very common today, we're seeing organizations with multiple tool sets because one tool may not just fit a particular department or a particular business need. We'd like to share three different case studies to help everyone understand how this strategy might apply. And the first one being when an organization needs to understand if they're on target to maximize their shared savings contract. Excellent. So again, if we sort of look out at what the business user might want to see, I, in the ideal world, if I'm a, a reimbursement specialist or I'm a negotiated a payer contract, or I'm responsible to manage our revenue, one of the common questions being asked is, are we going to hit our shared savings goal or are we going to see how much of that revenue that's at risk are we going to see coming back this year? Are we going to hit those quality bonuses or not? And so ideally, again, the business user would love to be able to just walk into some kind of a visual dashboard and literally point and say, where are the gaps if we don't see these patients? And what's the projected revenue cost to our organization based on that shared savings contract? Now, I'm absolutely oversimplifying what you're saying here on the screen, and I just want to share that. But the reality is we have a couple different approaches if we want to try to project revenue and tie that back to what are basically high-risk acuity patients and how do we would we structure this kind of data. And we've done this for customers, so the, the trick here is we have to think about what's the right approach. We've talked about this in other webinars, but really the data sources to look at quality data, payer data, insurance, really come from three different sources. And so I just want to explore that with you for just a minute. So our EHR data seems like the logical place. That has all of what we've treated patients for, the clinical conditions, and in many cases might be able to kick out you know, risk scores. But the challenge is that's not what the payers are saying. And the other challenge is a lot of times the EHR data is not consistent. If you've ever tried to report on it, it's not really structured well for analytics and reporting. Our billing system has some good data in it, but it's somewhat limited to visit data, utilization, procedures, and diagnoses. Our payer data often doesn't come back until after the close of the year. So if we're trying to see if we're on target and we don't see that data until February or March for the calendar year, we probably, that isn't going to help us determine a forecast or manage how do we make sure we hit those goals. So here, an incremental phased approach really makes sense, and that's what we've done for um, our clients. By using the billing data, which is fairly reliable, the quality is fairly consistent, and that is the data source going to the pairs, we can build out a data mark, calculate those risk scores, and then assign, even if it's a forecast or a projected amount of revenue to it, Using that, we can then use and look into the EHR data to valid against the billing data. And then as we get the payer data back, now we have something to compare what the payer is saying we did against what we've actually done, which we found is key, because oftentimes when the payers report back, they're reporting back what they think happened, and it always seems to favor the payer more than the, uh, the practice or the organization. So a couple different approaches here that can be used, but in this case, a phased approach allows you to move quickly rather than trying to design a whole solution that might take more than six or 12 months and we can't answer the questions that the business users need. And the second case study is actually very common today with acquisitions and mergers. This is when an organization has multiple billing systems and they need all the data in a single web-based visualization tool for analytics. Yeah, and this is one we're seeing just more and more and more. We've helped many clients with this you know, approach here. You'd think that we could just go and stage all of the systems together, but I go back to that time-phased approach may not work. Our best practice approach here for helping clients is to stage out system one. So we go from the data out of the practice management application, and by delivering that in the data marts that can add value to the users, the number one thing that's needed is not only can the users get an ROI, but we need them to validate that the data is staged and delivering to their business need. And so there's a key step there, because without that, we may be delivering something that doesn't really answer the questions they need. Then we would repeat that same process with System 2 and System 3. And it doesn't matter whether it's GE and Epic and Cerner or Allscripts, NextGen, ClinicWorks. It really doesn't matter what systems we're talking about here. This approach works whether you have one, two systems 
or five systems, and it will also work even when you're changing or migrating systems. So by staging each system individually, the users can now work within that system, but they've also validated the data. At that point, then, we're able to combine the data in an aggregated fashion. And it's important to note that when we combine that data, we're going to lose some of the uniqueness of each system. So this combined data set allows us to deliver highly visual analytics. But the second piece is when the users see outliers, they can drill back into the detail of the system. And let me show you an example of what that might look like in our tool set here. So if you look out on the screen here, I have a physician productivity data set modeled across multiple systems. And our groups here were merged, at least in our case study here, so that each individual data set has been modeled out and relates the data just for that data set. So I can analyze any one of these different groups which really represent different practice management systems. At the same time, I can look across all three systems and because we've aggregated and combined the data, I can look, let's say, at which physicians are performing at benchmark or below in the bottom percentile and very quickly start to see, wow, it looks like medicine has the most physicians that are potentially at benchmark or under. We could further look at which physicians aren't turning in charges quickly or which physicians are having very low on their patient satisfaction and very quickly narrow down the data. I want to stress, because we've used this phased approach in the combined data, I can now drill all the way back to the individual details, and from there, within that system, drill all the way down to the actual visit data, the patient-level data. So this phased approach really gives us a better validated data set, provides the end-to-end -end functionality that the users are going to be looking for once we move past that higher-level analysis. Now our last case study uh, demonstrates how taking a practical approach to building dashboards is beneficial. So the goal was to build out emergency medicine visualizations very rapidly. So Russ, if you could explain how an organization might do that. Right. So we had another customer who was really focused on trying to build out emergency medicine, some visual dashboards, and with one of the goals to understand the admission rates based on the patient's level of acuity. And so we have a similar methodology here at PDS that has helped us make clients successful that we utilize. We talk about this quite a bit, which is similar to how we might approach modeling data in a phased approach. We have something we call four phases to building dashboards. And the first thing is dashboards are much more focused even than a data mart, right? So we are trying to solve a business problem, but we're also trying to communicate effectively. And so most important is do we have clear goals on what we're trying to build into that dashboard? The second step then is, and we find this key, is work with real data in a sampling, but use real data. One, this helps you understand, can we get our hands on the data? What is the data that we're able to get? And we may not be able to get all the facts that we need, but maybe there are alternative data sets that we can use. And so by then starting to work with that data and model that data manually, you know, Excel is great for this. We can build out a sample dashboard, whether we do it in a visualization tool, we do it in Excel, or we do it on, in design on paper. We can model out that data, show it to the business users, and get their feedback. We've found typically a dashboard might take five iterations before it's really tuned. This approach, where we get to phase three, we can just continue to repeat until the business user says, yes, it answers the question. And I want to note why this approach is so valuable is we have not had to model data using a data warehouse or a data modeler. We don't have to understand joins and structure because we're manually modeling a sample with real data. We can also then deliver something to the user very quickly, whether or not we've actually modeled it into the data warehouse. And then going further, then we can decide, do we want to use a more top-down approach to get the data to relate? Or can we just use some aggregation of data to move quickly? Meanwhile, the users have the ability to do something like this. And this is very much a copy of one of the things we helped our customers do. So what you'll see on the screen here is we have multiple hospital emergency medicine departments. We have the acuity of the patients here across the screen and their acuity level and then their admission rate. So as you'd expect, the more acute the patients were in their levels, the, more, the higher the admission rates. Okay, but you can see we do have a few outliers, and of course the visualizations make it very easy to point and click and drag and drop and slice and dice through the data. So a very real example of by taking a phased approach and this kind of incremental step-by-step -step approach with our dashboarding, it will save on getting to results quicker, 
turning an ROI, and then when we go to model our data warehouse data and automate behind the scenes, we already really know what the goal is that we're trying to meet, and we can consider expanding the scope of the project. So in summary, we, we'd like to share some best practices that we've learned over the years for success with analytics. And the first one is to adapt an analytics culture, which you know really has to be driven by leadership. Prioritize resources. There seems to be that the needs seem to always outpace capacity. To blend and integrate multiple types of data. And my personal favorite, to empower your end users. Sure, and to continue on, learning to adopt technology quicker. There's a number of different reasons why that's on our keys to success. One of the biggest ones is organizations, their data warehouses tend to get stale, right? And what I mean by stale is they've invested, they built something, and then they say, well, now it can run itself. But if you're not keeping up with the changes and the enhancements with the new releases, if you're not helping users get more value when you go to make changes, it's a much bigger learning curve. And then key, and we talked a little bit about this in the first case study, understanding that the data you're working with may not always be perfect. That's so important. We've seen this time and time again. One of our customers says, don't let bad data get in your way. And I can't stress that one enough. And of the four that, Wanda, you mentioned earlier, the one that I would always stress is this prioritization of resources. Okay, And to me, this is what makes healthcare so different. I would say this is probably the number one key to success and why we typically follow a more phased approach, both for data warehouses and for dashboarding. The reason why we have to prioritize resources is unlike big companies like Apple or Google that can just take on a multi-million dollar development project and it can even fail and they can throw that away and say, oh, well, it didn't work. In healthcare, we don't have unlimited resources. We don't have unlimited budgets. And the business users, given the complexity of data within healthcare, always have more needs than we can serve. And I suspect most of you on this call are in some kind of an analytics role, or you're a business user looking for more ways to get more information out and to analyze data quicker. So because we have limited resources in healthcare, we don't have unlimited budgets, we have to be very focused on how we use that data, and we have to make sure that every step or every phase of our projects that we're prioritizing so we're getting an ROI as we move forward. And that's in a big part of why we hear our practical data solutions, then practical approach is really looking at taking phases and steps, turning our ROI, and then building on those for the next phase or the next step. So that's how I would kind of summarize through that. That completes today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like more information, please reach out to us, and we'd be happy to help you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.